Hey guys, got something really cool to show you. This is 3D modeling software Fusion 360. I basically spent the whole week 3D modeling this Harbor Freight caliper uh, with the help of that caliper. <laughs> I think it looks pretty cool. <laughs> So I don't remember exactly how I got this idea, how it evolved. The idea of 3D modeling this thing using basically this thing. Well, I can't measure this using itself, so I borrowed another one from work. So that was the original idea. It's like to 3D model something that you use to measure using a measuring tool, whatever. It's like recursive. I thought it was just so cool. I almost instantly discovered that it is not as simple as I thought. I mean... It looks like this is not so complicated, you know, just a couple of pieces of metal. There's some curves here. There's some, you know, angles in here that I thought I could measure. Um, this thing is a little complicated, but I thought I could handle these curves, you know, like some sort of spline and stuff like that. But like I said, as soon as I started, it's like, oh my God, there's just all kinds of pieces in here that, you know, it's like, I also didn't know how to make these letterings in here, but I'll talk about that later. Eventually what I end up doing is I use the technique that is, I think I learned this from Lars Christensen. Okay, let's go back in time. Bring this back all the way to here, I guess. So what you do is you take a picture of the object that you're trying to do, just straight down, perfectly straight down. I just happen to have one of these mats, so that really helped me to make sure that I'm looking at it straight down because if I'm if I tilt the camera just a little bit, you know, this will become closer to the camera and it'll become further, so it'll be like crooked. So it was really nice to have this mat. So once I got that, I created a sketch right on top of that to trace it. Once I got the, the general idea, then I used the other caliper to make sure that this is the proper dimension. So if I hide the canvas, you'll see the actual dimensions. So, you know, I got that 16 not from the picture, but from the real caliper. And I measure all these from the real caliper. Yeah, that's how you start it. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of steps here. What do they say? Uh, how do you eat an elephant? Yeah, one bite at a time. So I start with that little piece and I create a little dimple. Oh yeah, before before that step, let me bring it back a little bit. Before that step, all I have is a flat surface. Right here, this thing looks 3D. It's not. It's completely flat. <laughs> so that is perfectly flat. It's just a picture. And then as you get further, I start extruding. And you can see that it start to take shape. So that actually has depth now. So that is the... Uh, the ruler part or the front jaw part and then I make a little dimple here oh, let me hide that so you can see this better so I make a little dimple there for the markings and at this time I didn't even know how I'm going to actually uh, create all those letters because Fusion is a 3D program it's not a paint program so I can't easily paint these all I have is 3D tools but I'll talk about it when we get there. And what else do I do here? So this one here is a... I try to make them label like this. So you could say make sharp. So I see that's when I start cutting this. So you can see before I did that, that actually is still just like that. This ruler has a whole bunch of sketch. A sketch basically is a flat surface in, in which you draw things and then you like extrude and revolve things to create it, to make them into 3D. I created this little triangle to actually cut that. So if you if I move forward in time, you'll see that I just, I've just cut that piece there. And then before that, that piece was solid. And then you cut it with that little uh, profile. And it's just a matter of doing that. I mean, uh, uh, revolving things, extruding things, little by little, measuring every nook and cranny using the other caliper. I was saying that earlier that I could not actually make those lines by just simply painting them because all I have is a 3D program. So what I do in here is I created the ruler markings, use the canvas as a guidance, but all these blue lines here are actually computed. Let me edit that one and I'll see what I mean. So if we edit that, you'll see that I actually kind of use this as a guidance and then I, I actually measure. So in between them, that's one millimeter each and the, uh, the line is only 0.2 millimeters it's still really thin but yeah once i got one of these and i used the uh, patterning in fusion to create the rest of it so as you can see i didn't actually create the rest of them 
On this one, I created a pattern within the sketch. That's why you see all of them there. I'm not sure. I think the other way is better. So you create one of these, and then when you extrude them, they become 3D. That thing actually actually has depth. It's 0.1 millimeter thick. That's how thick the, the ink is. <laughs> and then I made them black using the... Yeah, there's all kinds of appearances here. If I press A for appearances, you could see that there's all kinds of materials. There's a glass for a little LCD. This is the black that I use for that. And there's uh, these are all the different steel. And then for every one of these, you can also edit and change the color and change the texture. Yeah, there's just like, those are just the basic things. And then you could actually change things around. I will share the file so you can actually uh, study how I did this. I didn't actually make it 100% uh, accurate but it is close enough it really gives me a, an appreciation as to how hard it would be to make an actual product like this to make a mold for this guy here let's bring this forward again in time well i guess i hid all those things uh, so yeah i i get them into uh, their own components so there's a, what i call a thumb roller that guy and then there's a ruler which is for some reason is hidden there's a ruler and then there's the rear jaw. I think that's every all the pieces now. Yeah, as I was saying, I mean, I could imagine if they, if this is actually, you know, being created for real, every nook and crane has to be 100% accurate, and this is like a precision device. So you know, there's no slop here. <laughs> you got to be really like 0 0.001 millimeter accurate. But I'm not that accurate. I'm just doing this uh, for fun. And uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun trying to find the font. <laughs> I didn't do a good job with this font. So I could not find a font that is exactly like the one it is in real life. But this one is pretty close actually, because this is actually not painted here. These are actual 3D objects. We could go back in time and change that. So I, I think that'd be kind of fun to try. So let me try that. So we can actually edit this text. Yeah, there's a font, Rockwell. I went through every single font that is on my uh, Microsoft Word to find that font. But I think it looks, yeah, if I show this the, on the real canvas, you'll see how close it is to the real thing. So here's mine. And here, there, there's a real thing. Pretty close, I think. Anyway, back to editing this. So we should be able to edit this and change it. And uh, it will show up in a real 3D object. So, and there it is. <laughs> it's a in the real 3D object. Let me hide the sketch too. The sketch kind of like distorted it because it has an outline. But yeah, this is a real 3D object with depth. The 0.1 millimeter ink that I was uh, talking about earlier. But uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but a lot of fun. There's all kinds of interesting things that I learned. It's like I didn't know how to create one of these guys here. But what I ended up doing is I created an oval. And then I create these little vertical things. And basically I take whatever's inside the oval. And that's how I created that. This is a extruded, kind of like at a diagonal. So, that, and then I create a, a horizontal pattern to make them. So I just create one of these and then I just, just keep on going there. And then I basically make a new, I create the intersection between the shape that I already drew. Yeah, it might be interesting to see how that's done. Let me see if I'm, yeah, I created, groups in here so they're all hidden but every one of these uh, little groups have a whole bunch of other things inside them so like i said it took me a whole week to to do all this anyway so let's go back to see if i can find this guy so that's that guy i also labeled them you can see that it says thumb bridges and this is uh, the sketch that creates the thumb bridges so let me see so yeah that's what i meant I created one of these and then I patterned them across and then the uh, this object already exists. I created that earlier without the without the texture. So all I did is I created an intersection between these guys and that guys and that's how I created the little ridges there. Oh yeah, this is this is cool. The uh, the LED here. I must hit I hit that too. Oh, that's before I created the LED. So let me finish this and the LED should come back. Yep, Ellie's back. But yeah, there's glass in here. That's pretty cool. I thought that's really cool. You see the, the, the glass in here? And there's actual depth there. So if I hide the glass, 
we could see that in there there's an actual depth there <laughs> Oh, here's another thing I learned from uh, Lars Christensen. He said that basically always put your object in, in kind of like an environment. So I put it on a table. And on, the table is nothing but just a flat surface like that. With uh, And then I get this uh, bolt and I just download that directly from McMaster Car. So I didn't actually model that. But yeah, I think having that bolt in there gives it a context as to what it's trying to do in here. So thanks, Lars. Well, guys, I could go on forever, but I think you, you've seen enough of this. So thank you for watching. And if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to try and answer them. And like I said, I'll share the file. So have fun and take a look at it. I'll see you next time. Bye.